uh, routing policy and BGP scaling plus some other issues. So uh, that's what I want to talk about. And I'm hoping I will finish it and we will start um, MPLS uh, today. So let's talk about routing policy. And uh, let me show you, for example, uh, what is egress traffic. So if I have a router, so I may send traffic out and I may receive traffic, right? So I may send egress and that would be ingress. Now I may, so that is sending out and that is incoming. I already hinted you when I was explaining uh, routing that they both are important. Right? For example, I extend a little bit on that, I would say egress. Traffic, for example. It would tell about So when I send an egress uh, message, I um, I tell my neighbors which routes uh, I have available. So that's what I send. So that's what sent out to neighbors. Okay. Uh, LSPs, when we were talking about link state is also an example of root availability, okay. Then I also tell others about my root acceptance. Okay, I would, root acceptance means if I have received roots. Where I would receive roots from, from my ingress traffic. which ones I will use or select or reject or accept. That also I tell my, my neighbors. And on top of that, I also talk about, I tell them about my policy and tuning. For example, I will tell them what routes I will prefer, policy, and what not. Then uh, I will also tell them if I do any peering. Peering. And I will also tell them about if I have any transit agreements. So these are four things among many, which four basic things, which I will use egress traffic for. Now let's look at the ingress as well. Then I will put them in perspective. So when I come to ingress traffic, so uh, as I mentioned here, so in ingress traffic, what I do is I receive. So packets, and packets, they come to me. 
records that come to me. And now I have to see what I do on behalf of them. Okay, the first thing which I do is if I write in the same manner. Is for example, uh, what, uh, of course, receiving would be simple. So what I should talk about is what ingress traffic uh, depends upon. Right, so what it depends upon. It depends upon, for example, what information you send, for example, to whom. If I'm not sending out uh, information uh, to my neighbors, how they can come to me, how they would come to me. So I will not receive any ingress traffic until unless I have not sent any egress traffic. So it also depends on, for example, addressings. Addressing. And ASs, which ASs I may receive traffic from, or I accept or not accept. It would also depend upon, oh, two what my policy is. So you see policy is there, policy is here. So it, either it's an ingress or it's egress. And you see one common thing is what I send, what I receive is depending on my policy. I mean routing policy. routing policy. So then let's draw our attention to what this routing policy is. Routing policy is, oh, when I go there, you lose me. So how far I should go? I should go that far, okay. Yeah, so routing policy. So routing policy now is what we are trying to control. We are trying to control the in and out traffic. Okay, so routing policy, we are trying to control in and out traffic. Okay, so And this in and out would depend on many things. For example, it may depend on, for example, individual routes. And I, I'm going to mention them and then I will put them in an example, in a perspective, okay? It would depend upon where the route is originated. Okay, it may depend on path. For example, ASS, as we mentioned. Okay, it may also depend on grouping. Okay, grouping through community and other ways of grouping. Now I'll give you an example. Uh, putting many things together. How I would sort of uh, uh, implement um, how I would implement, I would say, uh, the routing policy, a little example of the routing policy. Okay, let me adjust my windows a little bit. I want to keep an eye on your chat window in case someone sends me anything. Okay. So, Okay. Let me draw an example based on this topology. Let's say I have an AS. 
Let's say AS10. I have some other ASs. AS20. Oops. It's too small. AS30. And then I have cloud of internet. And then I have another AS here in the middle. AS40. And through that cloud, I reach here. And then I have two, two routers here, two routers here, two routers here, two here, two here, two here. So now what I, I may receive AS20 and AS30 BGP routes if AS40 permits them permits them to go through it. Oops. Permits them to go through it. And I accept routes from AS40. And I have transit agreement with AS40. You see now, uh, as part of internet, I can learn routes spoken out by AS20 or AS30. So this is part of the internet. So one component out of this internet cloud is um, AS40. Now AS40, I will receive routes from AS20 and 30 only if the routing policy of AS40 permits. So what that mean? If it let those through it, and if the routes spoken by AS20 and 30 are as per the routing policy of AS40, and it does not only depend on AS40, I can reach to AS40, AS40 can reach to me. So we have exchanged uh, that uh, knowledge. We have peership, we are neighbors, and we have transit agreements. Until unless all those things are not met, I cannot learn the routes from AS20 to AS30 through AS40. That is a practical scenario in many of the uh, communication. So why I cannot and when I should it all depends on the routing policy of all of those ASs. My own routing policy, routing policy of AS40, routing policy of all others which are involved. That is the importance of routing policy. And routing policy has a uh, sort of a, a great connection with BGP. Now let's see more narrowly what are sort of, uh, why I, I'm looking at routing policy. What are the issues, right? So I would say routing policy issues. Especially in BGP, why I need to have a uh, routing policy. Number one is the number of prefixes. So the number of prefixes, you know, yesterday when we looked at, they were more than 800,000. they were in excess of 800,000, right? So I, as a, as a policy, I may have preference of some over the others. I would like to block them. I would like to accept some. I would not like to have all of them because I don't need to have all of them. So how I can 
uh, filter them, how I can reduce them, routing policy would help me in doing so. Then, other examples would be, okay, even whatever I select, so what I would do in number one, I will select a subset of roots. Then let's say I make a subset of roots, then I get into another problem that some of them, they are good roots. When I say good roots, I would say they are stable. And some of them, they are unstable. What I mean by unstable. So number one, uh, they are available or not available. That is one, uh, that is one uh, way of looking at uh, stability. Available, not available, available, not available, that would say roots are not stable. Because if I would learn that route and I will make my policies, let's say going out through that route and that route is not available, what's the point? I have problem in my, uh, in my communication. So the other thing which can make roots unstable is, yes, I am available. I don't go down, but the value of uh, the routing cost to reach to me keeps on changing. So sometimes I have this cost, then I have that cost, then I have that cost, that cost. I flip a lot uh, among different sets of values of cost. That would also make me unstable. And that's very highly. Uh, so if that is the case, then I'll keep an eye and I will avoid such routes. So then I need to set up my policy. So these are some examples. There could be more. Uh, so these are the issues I want to deal with through my routing policy that's why i want to uh, filter out which you know one would come in which one would go out and all those things and i can do that through routing policy and bgp helps me in implementing that having said this uh it would be a good time to compare uh, let's say uh, some interior and exterior issues so that we can understand some more um, detail of routing policy. So interior issues would be issues which are related to IGP and exterior would be related to BGP, ABGP especially, right? So, in BGP, uh, in uh, interior, you know, we have automatic discovery of neighbors. If we are using RIP or we are using OSPF or ISIS or whatever, what we would do is, uh, that would remind me, uh, we skipped uh, talking about the difference between, uh, I said I would talk about later, uh, difference between RIP, no, distance between distance vector and uh, link state. So, okay, so, this is homework for you, so you should go and read it. Uh, the difference, there was a slide which was black and red, uh, talks about the distance vector on one side and link state on the other side. So please have a read through it and see uh, as a homework. And if you have any question, come back. So just it came to my mind that I thought I should uh, uh, look at it, but perhaps we didn't look at it. Okay. Okay, so in interior, uh, as we knew that we have automatic we have automatic route discovery uh, there is trustworthiness everybody's internal <coughs> excuse me everybody's internal everybody knows everyone okay so all the prefixes they are shared And then there is an admin distance involved. And only there is one admin distance value. We have one value. Every router, uh, routing protocol, RIP has a dis um, you know, dis admin distance and OSPF and everyone has you know, 110 or blah, blah, whatever it is. As compared to that, if we look at in the exterior matter, 
exterior matter. Uh, what we do is there is no automatic root discovery. There is no automatic root discovery. We have specific configuration for fear. So I would say we specifically configure peers, right? So peers are of two types, as we have seen in uh, BGP. So you have internal peers. Oops, I'm trying to write in a short place, but I'm not. It, I don't want to extend the page widthwise because when you make PDF, then they would cut off. So I would say internal and external peers. So you have internal and external peers. Okay, the then. The BGP, it does not have one admin distance. One admin distance, it has two distances, 20 and 200. Okay, internal and external, they have different admins. Uh, and you are sort of uh, topology uh, I don't have topology, so I could say I am topology independent. Why? Because I depend on peer ships. So I have sort of uh, different dynamics when I go internal and external. So my, let me come to, I'm going a little off topic, but let me come to uh, peer ships, right? Uh, just came to my mind, so. So it is a custom that for, uh, in IBGP, when I make peers, I choose logical interfaces. So when you configure EBGP, I would sit on one router, I would say this router is neighbor of that router on the far side. And in order to identify the identity of this neighborhood, I will use logical interface. But when you go to EBGP, so I'm a uh, router in one AS, I'm neighbor with another router in another AS, what I will use, I will use physical interfaces. Okay, uh, then if you say why, why? So the first uh, answer to the first why is uh, because uh, earlier we had a discussion when we said, uh, local interfaces are more reliable because they are hypothetical. They don't go down as compared to physical interfaces. And when I'm talking about inside of my own network, I've configured my network. I know all the interfaces uh, of my uh, network. So it would be better to go for a reliable uh, presence and would be, oops, I'm looking at the clock. It's 10.35. Do you want to take a break, come back later? Oh, let me finish this and go. So the why, uh, logical interfaces, because they are more trustworthy, they are more dependable uh, than the local interface, uh, than the real interfaces. So that's why we prefer them when we are local. So they, here we are local. When I talk about EBGP, I'm talking about others. Let's say I'm connected to Bell. So if I have to uh, make a neighborhood based on the, uh, uh, let's say, let me draw it. So let's say this is Dell, this is Bell. So we have two interfaces. And of course, this interface is known to me. So if I want to make a peer ship in external EBGP, so I would go to this interface. If I want to use local 
uh, like logical interface. So it means Bell should let me come inside their network as service provider. That's they would not, right? Because I cannot learn about the uh, logical interface or internal interfaces of someone else network. So that's why it's more uh, understandable that it should be the physical interface, right? External. There's another reason. So this is one reason. The other reason is TCP. Right? So I would like to have a TCP connection between this interface and this interface, which are directly connected. If I want to have a TCP between this interface and somehow this interface inside, then I need to do additional configuration. 